Hi there, my name is Pamela and I breed British Shorthair Cats in Perth, Western Australia. I've been breeding and exhibiting my cats since 2004 and I'm even a cat show judge. I'm passionate about the cat fancy and I want to share my knowledge and experiences with you so that you can enjoy your hobby as much as I do. That Well today I'd like to talk to you about poo. I always seem to get around to talking to you about poo, but um, yes, it's another poop topic and this one's really important for breeders to know and understand. And I think that this is not something that's just affecting new breeders. I think it affects all breeders because it's a little piece of information that you might not be aware of, but it's gonna probably change how you think about things. Now, when we have cats that have problems with poop, when we have kittens that have got diarrhea or we've got adults that have got diarrhea, one of the things that we do, obviously, is take them to the vets. And when we take them to the vets, there's a few different options for us. Um, and one of them is to do some testing of the poop. So that means you have to get the little container and you have to wait till they drop something in the litter tray and get the little scoop and off you go. And oh my God, it's a whole big deal. And you end up driving to the vets with a poo in your handbag. I mean, yuck. Um, I seal mine up in a plastic bag, several plastic bags, and then take them in. And then you have the embarrassing moment of handing it over to the receptionist or one of the nurses at the vets and saying, hi, I've got some poop for you. But they're used to getting poop every day. When we do a test for it, though, what happens with that test is where people might not realise there's, there's a few things that can affect what the results actually mean. Now, when we do testing for poop, there's two types of testing. One is that they look at the poop sample. And they're looking at the poop sample to see if they can see any obvious signs of anything. Because some bacteria can be seen uh, in the poop under a microscope. And they might do what's called a float test, where it's uh, whatever, it's, it's basically the poop's put into a solution and it, whatever floats and, and then that's, um, yeah, that's tested under a microscope. Um, and so they can easily see a few different bacteria, and they can also see a few more when they send it off to the lab for the same type of testing. So my vets have often looked at it in, under the microscope in the um, vet clinic, and then if we don't see anything, then we'll send it off to the um, lab to have another look at it. And the first thing the lab did, last time I did this, the first thing they did was they actually looked at it to see whether they could see anything. And then they do a PCR test. So PCR, I believe, stands for polymerase chain reaction. Um, it's a test of, it's basically testing the DNA of a virus or a bacteria. So it doesn't have to be live, whereas other tests you need to have it in there live. They're just testing whether or not it was there. It leaves behind its DNA. It's not DNA when it's a virus or a bacteria, but let's call it that anyway. So it leaves behind these markers that it was there. And the thing about it is that people go and get PCR tests done and they're not cheap. They get PCR tests done and then they get a result that says there's no, there's no bacteria, there's no virus. Or they get a result that says there's coronavirus. And so they either have no, re no explanation for why their cat's got diarrhea or their explanation is it's coronavirus. Now, coronavirus does cause diarrhea, yes. But what happens in coronavirus diarrhea is it tends to cycle around through your cat's and they'll get the diarrhea and then it'll get resolved and then they'll move forward and they'll be fine. So it's like coronavirus in people when they get COVID, some people get it, they get a little bit sick or pretty sick, but then they get better and they move on with their lives. Other people end up in hospital on a ventilator and that's the whole thing about coronavirus and FIP. But coronavirus itself, yes, it does cause diarrhea. But when we get this PCR test result come back and it says coronavirus and everybody says, well, that must be the answer. That's why my cats and kittens have got diarrhea. No, it's not always the case because here's the thing about the PCR test. The PCR test is not testing your cat's poop for everything or anything. It's not saying if there's something there, I'm going to find it. That's what breeders um, tend to think that the PCR test is doing, that it's going to find anything that's in their cat's poop. It's not. What it's going to do is it's going to test their cat's poop against a list of things that it recognises. So it's going to look at the poop and go, oh yeah, that looks like the thing that's on my list. Tick. That looks like the thing that's on my list. Tick. That's the only things I can see. There's nothing else there. Um, so coronavirus will come up a lot because it is something that's just in, it's just in cats. It's just in cats. They've all got it. 
that's my policy. Um, coronavirus is there. So it will probably come up as a tick for coronavirus, but maybe it won't come up with coronavirus. Maybe it'll come up with absolutely nothing at all. It just means that it didn't see those things that are on the list. It didn't identify the things on the list. So it went down the list and there was nothing there that was on the list. It couldn't see it. So it says, no, there's nothing on my list. It's not saying, no, there's nothing there at all. And I'll give you a really good example of this to demonstrate what I mean. My cat, Quimby, he had chronic diarrhea for a while there. We tried a few other treatments and um, didn't seem to be able to get it to resolve. It got a bit better, got a bit worse. So we went to um, do the PCR test. The first thing we did was we took a sample and we sent that off to the lab. And the first thing the lab did was had a look at it under the microscope, like I said they do. And they have a much you know, more powerful <laughs> microscope, obviously. And the results from that came back and said, we've identified a Campylobacter-like bacteria. So my vet said, my vet got those results first before the PCR test was finished. And she said to me, it looks like it's Campylobacter. They found something like Campylobacter. Let's get him started on the antibiotic for that. And so we did. And he, res he started to resolve. And it was amazing. So he was being treated for Campylobacter. A day or two later, PCR test comes back. Nothing. He does not have Campylobacter according to the PCR test. So the PCR test said, Campylobacter's on my list. I'm going to go look for that. I didn't find it. It's not there. And it was correct. Campylobacter was not there. But a Campylobacter-like bacteria was. So that's the thing. It identifies, it, it identifies what's on the list, but it doesn't identify other things that might be similar to what's on its list, but are not on the list. So he had, Quimby had a bacteria that was Campylobacter-like and responded to the same treatment as Campylobacter. But the PCR test said it was negative for Campylobacter. So this is the thing. When you send off a sample for a PCR test, if it's there, it'll tell you, and that's great because then you can treat for it and, you know, you've got an answer. For example, Giardia, if it comes back that it's got that, you can treat for that, great, you've got an answer. But it may not actually be the answer to your problem because it might come back saying negative and then you might think, well, my, there's nothing wrong with the cat, it doesn't have a bacteria, what's wrong with my cat? Actually, it still has a bacteria, it's just not one that's on the list and your cat could benefit from antibiotics. Or it could be, you know, something else entirely. So this is the thing. When it comes back negative, don't just say there's nothing. Then you've got to start doing other things to work out what it is. Um, and what you can do in that case is what I always do with my vet, and my vets are very good like this with me, is we have a discussion and we say, well, this is the symptoms. This is the environment. This is what the cat's eating. This is what the cat's doing. This is who the cat's been with. This is where the cat's been. All of these things let's come up with the most likely scenario for this cat and let's treat that cat based on that scenario. So when I had Giardia, which I've had, uh, I've had it once, when I had Giardia in my kittens, one of the things that we did was we talked about all the different things that it could be, the way it was presenting, the smell, the way that the kittens were pooping, um, how they were still quite healthy and running around and being fine, and the fact that I have a water tank and the fact that the water tank ran dry, and the fact that some of my cats have, um, get water from the water tank and some of them get town scheme water. The scheme water cats, fine. The tank water cats, poopy. The adult cats resolved, the kittens stayed poopy. It was screaming Giardia. So we treated for Giardia. I never did a test on it. I never tested their poop at all. We treated for Giardia, the issue resolved. They were fine. They needed actually needed two lots of treatment, but they were fine. So sometimes PCR tests can be a really great tool to tell you something, but they are not the end of the story. Um, they will come back as negative, even though your cats do still have bacterial viruses, because they're not on the list of things that PCR test is testing for. So they're a tool, but they're a tool that gets used with a lot of other things. And my my ultimate thing that I always think is really important is looking at looking at it as a, as a whole big piece of information, lots of different um, bits of data coming in, look at all of those things, and then PCR might be part of that, um, but there's other things that are important in terms of diagnosing as well. 
So that's another podcast on poop. I'm sure there's going to be more podcasts on poop. If you've had a PCR test and it's come back and it's been a bit interesting like that, I'd love to hear about it. Um, I'd love to hear, you know, whether or not you had something that was similar where you had a test and it came back negative, but then you treated for the thing and the cat resolved. But I'm hoping that everybody out there, all I could wish for you all is to have really nice, firm, nuggety poops coming out of your cats because that's the way it should be. And I'll tell you something else funny about poop while we're here. One of my members of my new cat breeders club posted recently to say she was a bit concerned about her kittens' poops. She had This was her first litter of kittens. Um, she said the kittens are pooping and the poops are very round and um, quite, you know, round and hard little poops. And I said, that's perfect. <laughs> that's actually every breeder's dream, to have kittens pooping nice, solid, hard little pellets of poop instead of runny, soft poops. Um, yes, that's exactly how they should be. And it was really cool because I was able to tell her that everything was okay um, and that it was fine. And she was quite happy to ask the question and, and then nobody gave her a judgmental answer. And that's what my new breeders club is all about. So if you want to find out more about that, it's on my website at www.catbreedingforbeginners.com. Dot com. Just find the um, link at the top of the page that says club um, and go and have a look, check it out and see if it's something that you might be interested in joining because we would love to have you there. It's 59, 15, not 50, 15 99, um, Australian a month to join the club. Um, and one of the things that we're finding is because you do have to pay to be a member, people who are just, you know, random people who want to say judgmental comments and be nasty on Facebook, they are not joining. It's a really wonderful space. So if you're interested in joining, go and check it out on my website and I would love to see you there. Um, stay tuned because there will be more poop podcasts, I'm sure. Okay, bye for now. Thanks for listening to the Cat Breeding for Beginners podcast. Make sure you visit my website at catbreedingforbeginners.com for lots more information. You can sign up to my email list and stay tuned as my Cat Breeding 101 online course is coming soon.